Yeah. Excited. Excited. Thank you. I found a. Well, let's let's check out this video on her. Let's see here. No. Spotlight got zoom on. Okay, good. I like this. I have my little chart up here. I've never. I've always had it written down, but I've never had it like on my computer. Right there, I've got a little chart of and things that we need to do. Okay. That's helpful. Well, it's, it's nice having it right up there. Um, let's screen share. And boom. And how are we doing? Are we ready, you guys? Let's see. Okay. Mary Cassatt was one of the few female impressionists and the only American painter who was fully recognized as an impressionist. She was born near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1844 to a wealthy family, which allowed her to pursue her interests with greater ease than the typical working class woman. This included frequent international travel, wherein she was exposed to European art as well as her attendance at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. In the 1860s and 70s, Cassatt started sending her paintings to the Paris salons and saw success there, including the acceptance of her painting, The Mandolin Play. And yet, not unlike her future Impressionist contemporaries, Cassatt grew bored with the traditional salon style and began experimenting with the Impressionist style she saw in Degas' work during one of her trips to Paris. In 1879, she was invited to exhibit with the Impressionist for the first time in the fourth Impressionist exhibition to date, where she showed Woman in a Lodge with a Pearl Necklace or Lydia in a Lodge. Although she achieved high praise in Paris, when she had her painting exhibited in America, it left critics unimpressed, pushing her to stay in Paris with other like-minded artists. A few years before her Impressionist exhibition debut, Edgar Degas had begun to be a fan of Cassatt's work, and the two of them would go on to form a lifelong friendship, which included numerous exchanges of letters and art. In 1877, Cassatt painted Little Girl in a Blue Armchair, for whom Degas provided the model and even painted a small portion of the background to itself. This painting is widely considered her first real Impressionist painting and was formative in Cassatt's exploration of female subjects and the private moments within home spaces. She also shows great concern with capturing the personality of her subject which she would continue to strive for throughout her work. It was Degas who gave Cassatt an official invitation to the Impressionist Club, and by default, she became yet another American artist working outside of the U.S., such as John Singer Sargent. Although Cassatt had been rejected in her home country, she was proudly American and proud of the American naivete that stood out in her work. On one occasion, she stated, I am American, clearly and frankly American. It was also Degas who further encouraged Cassatt to focus on people, breaking with the other Impressionist direction of plein air landscape. She never fully abandoned plein air painting, however, her greater delight tended towards her figures. Although they had quite different temperaments, Degas the cynic and Cassatt the good natured, Degas also said that he believed they had identical dispositions of a reserved rationality that helped them remain mutually beneficial friends. In 1882, there was deep unrest in the Impressionist group, resulting in a temporary split in which Cassatt was forced to join the group of defectors from an exhibition that was to be held due to her loyalty to Degas. Even more devastating, her sister Lydia passed away during this time sending the Cassatt family into a state of despondency. The Impressionist group would not be fully reconciled until the death of Monet brought them back together once again. And yet, the diminishing freshness of the movement allowed Cassatt to become more relaxed with her compatriots, 
getting to know them and their families more personally outside of the chaos of the art circle. Cassatt would also retreat to Spain during this time to recuperate and did not really begin working again until 1885, at which time Durand Ruel would involve her in yet another Paris Impressionist exhibition, as well as an ambitious New York Impressionist exhibition. In the 1880s, Cassatt began her series of mother and child paintings, which became a signature of hers due to its frequency in her work, along with other paintings of the unseen lives of women. Degas even proclaimed her later painting, Mother and Child, or The Oval Mirror, to be the greatest painting of the 19th century, in part due to the nuance of texture Cassatt achieved in a figure's skin and the use of symbolist technique to turn the ordinary into the religious. A year previously, Cassatt had painted Louise nursing her child which was a subversion of the male gaze in motherhood, showing her commitment to creating her own voice in the field. Unlike other mother and child paintings, such as Renoir's A Woman Nursing a Child, the face of Louise is turned from the viewer, casting all attention on the child itself, the apple of the mother's eye. This subtle demonstration of the child's value through the mother's eye shifts the perspective of the viewer from the outsider to the inside part of the mother. Although Cassatt never had children of her own, her proximity to women allowed her to understand the mother-child relationship in a way that her male peers could not. She had already began exploring these new, exclusively female spaces in her work, such as the tea, which shows two elegant and affluent ladies in a salon. And yet, it isn't their fine clothes or the setting that draws the viewer in. It is Cassatt's attention to the personality of her figures during a moment of relaxation in the bustle of modern Parisian life. One of the women still has her gloves on, as if she stepped, just stepped off the street, and their casual posture gives the picture a delightfully candid she was also unconcerned with painting classically beautiful women and enjoyed not relying on natural beauty to create monumental work, such as the figures in her painting, Young Woman Picking Fruit. Another huge influence on Cassatt's work were the Japanese woodcut prints that inspired a whole host of other impressionists as well. She especially loved the prints of the artist Utamaro which she saw for the first time in an exhibition at the Beaux Arts that she and Degas attended together. From there, Cassatt did a series of dry point etchings, including the bath, which shows both Japanese influence as well as her fascination with mothers and their children. After this, she painted the, ch the child's bath, which seems to be a natural evolution of her integration of the print style, including bold patterns and belts. Although many Impressionists were inspired by the prints, Cassatt and Degas' unique use of black may have been one element of inspiration that the others did not share. They both agreed in the necessity of black to create depth in certain paintings, as well as the bold effect it would give a piece. The swath of black cloth in Cassatt's portrait of her mother is a clear example of that effect. Perhaps the most tremendous creation of Cassatt's that uses Japanese ideas of composition was, of course, her painting The Boating Party. One of her largest paintings, The Boating Party, sees a use of bold colors and layered composition, artfully concealing certain aspects of the scenes to create depth, just like the print. And the diagonal lines of the oars and the man's arm draw the eye into the mother and child whose delicacy creates a stark contrast against the sharp angles. We also see the use of black once again in the shadow of the man's attire. Cassatt also greatly enjoyed the work of Hoban, a Renaissance court painter, and the way in which he would flatten his background to accentuate the three-dimensionality of his portrait. Her painting, Breakfast in Bed, shows the use of that effect in the juxtaposition between the flat surfaces of deep greens around the figures and the attention paid to the rolling forms of the pillows and the layered rendering of the skin. 
It is also yet another beautiful mother and child portrait, offering a tender glimpse into a lazy family. Cassatt's continual use of children in her paintings displays her patience as a painter, working with subjects who couldn't sit still for her in the way that other models could. Cassatt's love of children in action can be seen in her earlier work, Picking Flowers in a Field, which is personally one of my favorites of her paintings. The rendering is delicate, but sketchy in a fashion Cassatt enjoyed in some of her smaller, less finished these are more reminiscent of a more so method of rendering that leaves the viewer with a sense of spontaneity and ease. Cassatt was about 50 years old when she finally had a retrospective exhibition of her work in Paris, taking place at Durand Ruelles. It was symbolic of the respect that she had earned in the Impressionist circle and was favored by Parisian art critics. Although Cassatt was quite an active and respected member of the Impressionists, her Americanism mixed with the French style often, often leaves her work cast aside in the greater Impressionist canon, and curators often struggle on whether to put her in the American or European section. Cassatt's womanhood and attention to female subjects also didn't help her gain notoriety in the years after. And yet, her legacy lives on and with the push by art historians to revisit those artists who were relegated to the edges of the canon, no doubt the impact of her work will live on as well. What's the difference between... Oops. Go. That was very interesting, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's sort of an anomaly. I mean, here's a a an American in working in a French style. You know, it's how they said the uh, the I don't know what it was. Not I'm, what is it? A salon over here? I don't know what it was. American Academy or something like that. But they, they sort of didn't like her loose style, I guess. So she stayed over there in France. Yeah. I I like that ladies having tea where that cup was just covering that woman's face. Did I know, huh? That? Yeah. I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean she's excellent. She she's I, I think she's just as good as anybody. She I mean, used the man's name. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, especially, you know, you can really feel the Degas in her, though. Uh, uh, in yes. fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he got a lot from her. I know maybe some people wouldn't like me saying that, but uh, um, she's so well studied in, in asymmetry. No wonder she's so drawn to the Japanese uh, way of composing. So it's just, just really interesting. So, so much to say here. All right, let's see now. Come over here, and shall we do a value study? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So we've got. Um, I guess she's probably doing a self-portrait here. No, I mean, that's why it's called self-portrait. I mean, she's got a canvas right here. Move your sleeve. And maybe, um, She's 
drawing shapes here. I love all the little sketchy little uh, calligraphic strokes she puts all over. Now, um, yeah, this is watercolor, a little gouache in the face, some, some gouache in the background here, mixed with watercolor, I'm sure. But in the face, if you get up close, she's really putting some, she's really crisscrossing some beautiful colors. She just weaves those colors in with gouache. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if she did a lot of these like this and then did the pastels over them. She's really great with pastel. So I don't know, but this one stands alone. Um, I'm pretty sure there's no pastel in there. OK. So let's, let's, um, it's a very light background. I'm just going to mix my Prussian and my red to give me a nice piece of gray. Let's see what we got here. It's pretty dark. Yeah, it's a very light value in the background. Just basically white here. And we get a little bit darker with this. Just a bit. Come up into her hat. It's pretty light too. lighter back here. Um, and uh, what happens is that the bill here um, casts a little bit of a shadow over her eye socket and you get this little shape of shadow in her eye socket, down her nose, cast by her nose, over this way. Then we also have some shading in the cheek. Um, the lips and then a little shadow over the chin. But all this goes into sh shadow. So just come in with a, a value and I just take all that out into one value like that. A little bit over there too. And even on that bill it's not white. Here is this. The hair right under the bill does get a little bit darker. That's a pretty light value on that collar. A little bit darker for the scarf. And 
And then let's go ahead and get a lot darker. This whole area. Even darker in those uh, shadows. Um, yeah, they spoke over using black in the shadows. That still wasn't. Still, thing. I mean, you know, they're they're coming out of uh, more classical ideas of, so they're still using black. You'll find later, especially after Monet's influence, artists start shying away from black. This all went flat on me, so I need to hit a couple of little darkies in there. Not really dark, but darker than. Me in the eyes too, just a couple of little. Yeah, just letting you know. Some back there. Need little sketchy marks. I wonder what she was thinking back here. They almost look like plants. Actually, I wouldn't want to make those too dark. Got to detract from her. Okay. Okay. And again, let's just move on with the uh, <clears throat> Study here. I'm a little skinny, and I have been a gallon of this water. And put down this chair. Maybe a little longer, too. Right, a little hair, some eye sockets, sort of a reference to where maybe the nose would be. Chin. Ear.
Okay, so and I can feel the green in that limb, but the sort of yellow. So I think I'm gonna you know, a little bit more on the lemon yellow size. Might not be that severe. If I wanted to gray that down or mute that down a little bit, I can just add a, a little bit of violet. A little bit of violet. There's not that much violet in that. It does gray over on this side, yeah. A little more violet in that. So that's a uh, ultramarine blue and magenta. And maybe even lighter, huh? We'll just pull some of that off too. I'll let that dry up a little bit. I think I'll go down to this Prussian. That's just Prussian. I mean, it looks like straight Prussian. Well, there's a little yellow in the front of it, so. I'm gonna use Prussian blue. Just get some dark things in there. Maybe something darker in there. Um, I want to add some, some more of that lemon yellow, I think, to the front. And I think she needs to be darker. I think this stuff is just. drying very light on me. All right. I think that'll dry a lighter. But I do like the yellow in there. Now I'm gonna go up to her hat. And, you know, I would call it a dull orange. So really, cad yellow, cad red, and a little ultramarine blue. And then dominate it with, with the orange. So just make an orange and then add some blue to dull it. That's all you're doing. It's pretty much the same color in the scarf. Oops, you're cleaning that scarf now. Sorry, you gotta go. And eh. that impression just like likes to just hog the painting, doesn't it? The colors are just so dramatic. Okay. And we have some light blue back here. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the ultramarine blue. Bad. 
to get some stronger blue in there. Got kind of gray on me. I like that green you just got in there. That's great. Probably just making some experiments. Some in here. Same color. I see she, she hits a little couple of little notes of um, red in the bill there, which is kind of nice. Maybe a little magenta. Maybe she even hit a little cat. Whatever. And then so for her face. Um, you want to come in with a kind of a pink color, and it looks like it has a little white in it. So I'm going to put the shadow color in first. So kind of pink. Instead of using the white of the paper, I'm seeing a lot of white, a lot of opacity in this. So. Pink, and there's a lot of uh, blue in it too. Let's see how this works. Something like that. So I just use pink, I use, use red and white. CAD red, light, and white. And then um, I added a little bit of this. This background color blue to it. We've got uh, ultramarine blue and white. That's all that was. It's going to paint right over her hair. Nice little um, hint of red up in here. It's pretty strong. Add red light in there. Put it in her in her lips. Um, I see just a touch in her there right back here. But since it's on my brush, I'll put it in. She comes in with some, um, not a whole lot of color in this reflected light here. You'd think there'd be more yellow in it or something. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that color. And just hit it right back up in there, like that. There's a little bit in here too. A little bit in there. Hmm. 
typically the bottom of the nose will catch some too and the inside of the eye sockets but I don't see too much here I'll zoom into this for you and that hair shape I just see white and everything. So I'm just making a brown, red, yellow, and blue. You know, oftentimes when you're mixing, you, you know, you mix so much red, yellow, and blue, you, you might just have it on your palette already. Pretty common to have a color, color like a neutral color like this on your palette. Some um, for the whites of her eyes, I'm going to use a very, you know, really, it's it's almost like this blue back here. It's it's a very dark. Most people think well, the whites of the eyes. We got to paint white. They're hardly ever white. They're really not even that much darker. Oh, are they any lighter than the flesh and the shadow? I think they're about the same. And there we've got. I'm seeing a little touch of something kind of violet the eyebrows and then we got a pretty dark Russian blue or something for the eyes And there's just little touches. I can't get that small and into the corner of her mouth. I think that's fine. Um, I still want to hit that reflected light. And I hit it. I thought I hit it pretty bright, but it wasn't bright enough. I'll really kick this one in there a little bit bright. Let's see how it works. Then I want to hit yeah, something pretty bright on this side too. On her nose. I'm using the same colors I used that in that reflected light. Just pink. And then she augments that with some little rosy in the cheek there. Even in the chin, too. She's really subtle, by the way. You gotta get up and look at her paintings. Or right up, get your nose up in those paintings. It, there's a lot going on. She gets these beautiful, sublime, like, um, comparisons of color. You see how she's just sketching all this blue and violet in there. It's just all over. Wow, it's crazy. That's pretty good for a color study. Let's see. I mean, it's kind of, I guess I could go grayer in here, but that's fine. Okay. 
let's do it. Uh, you guys want to take the photo? Yeah. That's pretty good. Okay. Everybody got it? Zoom out all the way here. Let's see if I can get her in there. It's a pretty long vertical, so I might not be able to get her all in there, but we'll see. I mean, without moving the camera. Now, she uses it. I do see very little pencil in there. So, in fact, that might not even be pencil. There might not be any pencil in this at all. Um, yeah, I can't find any pencil in there. You could use pencil if you want. You don't have to. If it helps. I'm just going to, I'll go ahead and do it the way she did it. So one thing you can do you're a little timid, it's just, you know, I'll get myself blocked so that here I am there, okay. It's just use a very light line like this. Maybe, maybe a little darker than that. Okay. Maybe uh, something like that. I could go not even lighter. Now this impressionist way, for those of you who've had my my uh, other card, and you know I'm a little close over here, I'm like, well. For those of you who had my uh, uh, um, portrait class. They don't, uh, impressionists don't tend to lay out all the rules like the way I teach it, which is more classical. Um, they, they tend to work like this, more in shapes, just, just abstract shapes, which, you know, I'm going to have to move this over. Um, so like for instance, we have the shape of the hat here, okay, I'm coming to the neck, it's the outside shape, so it really helps to get your outside shapes down. I mean, my, my page is just a little skinnier, I've gone bigger, so. Whatever, it's fine. Um, so nailing that outside silhouette shape is really a great idea.
You know, drawing with a brush is definitely something the Impressionists would do. You can see it in Degas, you can see it in Monet, you just... We're all about the brush strokes. So I am kind of zooming in on a little bit, but... <clears throat> That'll work out better, I think. So just mostly outside shapes for placement. And you notice that she has pinker tones in the face. So I'll switch to something a little bit redder. What have we got here? We got down there. Um, there's our bill of her hat. Everything just becomes a shape. It stops being hair and starts being a shape. That's a, that's a very impressionist idea to stop looking at things for what they are and start seeing everything as just shapes first. Shapes first, then colors, then values, and then edges. And, and um, so what they're doing is actually treating it like abstraction, and that's what leads the way, leads the way to abstraction. Eye socket there. So you see now, what I'm doing here is I'm not really drawing an eye socket or a, I'm just, what I'm drawing here is a shape of, see, that, that shadow. And here too, so you might, you, it comes up and climbs up over the nose and comes down. Uh, you might want to just mark about where the bottom of the nose might be, where the lips might be, just to kind of help. And then we have a little shadow over there. The bottom side of the nose goes into shadow. Cast the shadow over the top lip. So you get this little triangle of light right here on the, right here. And then we've got. Uh, what, yeah. what color is that? What? The color. Um. I just picked up some warm stuff. It was some of the color I was using in her face, pink. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just it doesn't really matter as long as it's a, um, you know, it'll, something that'll be easily covered up over when you paint. So redder colors are easier when you doing pink. If I painted this all in blue, it might be tougher to cover. But, all right, so we got that little triangle of white here, and then right under the under the lips, we have this sort of shadow that dances around the um, chin. You know, like those in the shadow. All of this is in shadow. So you see how they just they take the the face and basically. Make it uh, shadow and light, which is a 
Um, it's not that that uh, classical artists didn't do that. It's just that they were usually a lot more complex than that. And see that the, the um, impressionists were so much about simplicity. So I've got this scarf over here. I'm going to put on there. Somewhere in that area. Oh. Let me uh, zoom out. And again, the, the scarf really is just a silhouette. I mean, uh, it's just very sketchy. And so is all this. So let's see now. Um, I've got her hat doing something more like that. I've got that light blue part right here. about all the drawing I do. So you're drawing with color, right? That is painting. Okay. And I want to put some of that lemon or yellow on this area. Make this a little grayer over here, so I'm going to add a little more violet to the color. Maybe it could be a little more yellow than that. Very light. I should try a lighter. I think it's pretty good. So while all that's drying. It'll come down into here. So I'm going to crush in blue and lemon yellow's in there. Pretty dark. Make sure I get some of that lemon yellow in there. Dry 
question. Russian blue. If it gets too blue, you need to gray it down. Just add a little bit of red to it. Down here, some of these blues get a little bit gray. So add, if you add a little bit of cad red to it, these are the ones down here, it'll gray it, it'll gray your blue. Just like when we do the rubble sketches, <clears throat> all value studies, you yeah. know? Okay. She's got these little zigzags back there. I'll bet you she was just testing paint. I love those little, you can see how the artist thinks. A little red in there. Here. She's got some green. Not not a real glaring green, you know, just sort of a oh I'm, I'm pretty wet back there still alone. Wow. Maybe I'll just try it here. I almost feel like it leaves or something. I think I'll just let that dry and work my way into this area. And so the, um, the white and ultramarine blue for this. She throws a great yellow in there, wow. Yellowy green. I probably just it's probably just lemon yellow. Uh, and then mixed in with the blue. I don't know. 
So I'm gonna try. See, it's pushing the blue away, so I'm thinking it. Maybe she saw that on the chair or something. These impressionists, so they'll just experiment all over the page. Because they know at any moment they can change anything they want. And I think a lot of times they just left it because they thought it looked good. And you'll see these paintings that were heavily critiqued. And all the shows, and they just leave the loosest, loosest things on there. I didn't really learn that until, until um, one of my teachers used to take my paintings away from me. He'd go, and I'd be struggling and struggling and struggling, and then he'd see me do a good lay-in and just take it. He'd take it, start another one. I'm like, God, I finally did a good lay-in. What are you doing? So, I don't know. You want to study this later? Okay, now I just made orange, like a yellowy orange, and then um, added some, a uh, little bit of blue to north neutralize that. Yeah, we got sort of this blue shape on here. I've got the, the bill. This is I'm sort of lost edge. Oops, a little redder than that. Okay, a couple of those little things, a couple of these in there. Okay. You know, since I have it on my brush, I mean, it's pretty much the same colors right in here. See what she got here. So you could tell she comes back, she comes back and draws back into it like, like this. Come back and just finding her edges. I 
to see are really creative, rhythmic, flowing lines. You'll do it too. When, when, once you start loosening up, you know, when you, when, once you start loosening up, you'll, you'll start doing this. I was going to say it almost looks like a, a sketch in yeah in watercolor. Well, kind of the idea. You, you wanted that sketchy quality. Uh, a little bit in here, a little blue in there. Could have done that better. Ultramarine blue and white. And that's all I'm using for this area and this area. There's you know, violet in there too. Throw a little. Maybe it's a little drying light on me, drying dark on me. There we go. That one got a little pink on me. I see some of that white and blue down here too. Maybe she used that to cut back into it and just refine the shape of the shoulder. So she did a little bit of that, which looks great. If you if you keep kind of a vibrating broken edge like this, you can rework an edge so easily. So oftentimes you'll see these edges in impressionist work because we just go back into it, cut the background in, move this back over, we just keep moving around. So they get it the way they want. More of this, get my chin a little bit long there. Okay, now let's come in with some pink in the face. So, cad red, cad red, and white. Oh, oh. there's my brush rolling all over the place again. Okay. And yeah, kind of a pink color, and there's some blue in her in her face too. Kind of violet almost. Something like that. Maybe a little bit darker. That came out really blue. I'm just going to go right over the hair.
just breaking this thing down into shapes. So I know there's a lot more colors in there, but I just want to cover it first. So I can just kind of see the shape. And you know, she does get kind of white in here. I think I'm going to hit it now while it's wet. Get that a little bit brighter in here. And under the eye socket, too, a little bit. Huh? I'll leave that alone for now. And I'm just going to blend that right back up into the face. See how that works. There'll be a lot of cools and things like that in the course too, so it's not going to be that warm. It's funny, this color looks very violet, like blue violet here, and I'm looking up there and it looks kind of greenish. Huh. You know what? Maybe while I'm at it, I'll just hit this hair in there. Um, the cat red. A little magenta. A nice color. Cat red and magenta. <clears throat> Where are you, brush? She pulls some white color up and over the hair to lighten it up. It has a really translucent feel to it. And she gets pretty dark back here. All this hair was really dark, and then she came back and just lightened it up. So maybe for the eyebrows, they're very light. Looks like just a very light violet.
they're going to move on. Here we go. Huh? I'll zoom in on that for you. Put it down a little further. Maybe your eyes in there. So that kind of gives me the shapes. And if you look at the outside of the iris, and you see how she came around it and cut back into the iris with some white around it. That's a, number one, she gets these nice soft edges that way. Number two, she can correct anything she puts down there, which is coming back with the edges. So what that means is, let's see. You know, so I take some blue, I'm going to take uh, Prussian blue. And put that in there. This one. And you know, let's just say she made it a little bit large. Could always come back in and sort of whittle away at the edges. Okay. Kind of idea looks like here. She's using sort of a light blue, so. Rob, did you say was this a watercolor or oil? Oh uh, no, this is watercolor and gouache. Okay, thanks. I mean, I don't even know if they used gouache back then. I think they just used white with their watercolor. But maybe, I don't know. Maybe they had gouache. I, I, I know they had tempera paint, so I mean, that's maybe. That's what they called. Um, I think they call it body color or something like that. Okay, let's see now. A little bit blue in that. Yeah. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't surprise me if she's just using white with her watercolors, but because I can tell that this is watercolor in her in her big areas it's mostly watercolor. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if she's using um, just white with her watercolor like I am. But it's quite possible she could have used gouache. I don't know. So see I'm using just some lighter, some lighter, sort of this color that's on the bill come back in here and just play with some of these shapes. I got one of our eyebrows up higher. Okay. And she, she's got all these cools in there too, so this is great. I mean, is it green in there, violet in there? What, she's crazy. She uses everything. Um, I'm seeing, oh, I wanted to do that, uh, I just wanted to put her 
eyebrows up a little higher, like up in there. Okay. Um, so for some of this color in here, I'm going to go with a really light pink, much lighter than anything over here. Just covering all the white. Let that um, seep uh, dry on the surface a little bit more before I go over it. I love these little, you look around the edges, she's got these little dark little, she just shifts things. It's a real, real mastery right there, how she just kind of, take your eye over here. Rob. Over there, yes. I looked up gouache, it was manufactured industrially in the 1800s, and, yeah. De, and Degas used it. Oh yeah, Degas definitely used it, yeah. So she knew. So you know she knew about it and used it too. Yeah. Here she got her pastel technique from, you know, Degas' tutelage. Wow, all that little, all those little cuts in. I'll just soften that edge a little bit. And what else? Okay, how are we doing over here now? Oh, okay. So she comes back, you know, some. With definitely white on there, but there's lots of other color in there. We can come back and start building up some of these surfaces. And I can tell my my light over here could be a little further over to the left and up onto the nose there a little bit more. Okay. And just sort of goes into shadow, picks back up into light. A little bit of light there. And whole bunch there. And the more you get up in there, you can see he's got this almost yellowy color, which which makes actual sense. And she would have a yellowy reflected light in here. You can see it. Because it would hit here and bounce up into these underplanes. Probably in here too. I see red in there though. Maybe a little bit under there. Um, I'm go for some cools in the face now. And she just, she's, she's got just many, many different kinds of cools and warms running in these. These colors are very, very subtle. So this hair is just dark enough. I'm going to 
Сейчас можно выбрать так. Edges are too hard here, so I have to soften them. Just taking some of that blue, breaking down the edges, that's all. Oh, that reads that reads really bright up there. It's actually darker. Wow, it's easy to read my values wrong. Jeez. There's no way my these lights are anywhere near as light as what I'm seeing up there. It's like two values off. All right, I'll go darker. Well, it still looks pretty good. Yeah, but I mean... That's a bummer. <laughs> I just got that just right. I'm looking up there and I'm you're not getting it. You're not what? what are you doing? All right, so. Cat red. These lips. She really, that cat red is just finding its way all over the face. Look at these little, little hatches in there. Just trying to step you into the light. Right to me. I mean, it doesn't look like it when I'm looking at it here. I look up there and it's, it takes all my values and makes them too light, too dark, too saturated. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to take a little bit of, ooh, that's dark. Yeah, the more you get into it, the more subtle you can see it is. You see what I did on the lips there? Just to break things down? So do that everywhere. The more you look for it, the more you'll see where she'll just hatch in her marks. Like in here. Just. And, and then just leaves the hatch marks. Oftentimes, I mean, in this case, no, but I could see her knocking back a value like that. 
and then coming back with something redder and going right back over it, and then you, you you're just left with this uh, very weavy wave look. Or, or, or more muted color. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you can just keep weaving color like that all day. Mm. Oh, in here, just... It, it shows confidence and you have control of what you're doing. Yeah. Not to be intimidated by the pain. Definitely. Yeah, with this method you could you can keep playing and playing and playing and overlapping and taking chances. I love these little greens in their face. Those are great. So I think it needs a little green here. A little green in there. Maybe it's a little darker than that. Maybe we we'll see a few little greens in there. I guess I'm just so the nose that it gets a few. A few values. We'll color differentiations under here. But anyway, you could come back and just shape that nostril all day long. It's a really popular way to work for artists. Artists love the forgivingness of it and the beauty of it. And the acceptance, you know, when, when people look at Impressionism in museums, they usually just, they usually love it. And you know, in more classical ideas would not be for that kind of thing. It's, you know, it's weird. Classical art, unfortunately, tends to play down the expressiveness of the of the way you paint, and unfortunately. My problem with that is uh, I don't want to look like a machine did it. And I don't want to be a machine. <laughs> She's so vague in here too, huh? Really nails that little pop of red in there, though, doesn't she? bigger.
It might be a good idea just to lay it in too big and then come back in and play with the edges. I was just thinking about the clothes she's wearing. She's wearing a, a dress with a very full skirt, hmm. and she's painting it. I mean, it looks like she's ready to go outside. Maybe she's painting outside. I don't know. Sometimes these, you see what they used to wear, and it's like, wow, that's a nice suit you're painting in the middle of the country. You have this beautiful suit on. Well, the woman has this big, giant, white dress, and she's painting other people with white dresses. <laughs> I mean, actually, that would be a lot of fun to paint, I have to say, all that white. So, strange by today's standards, maybe, but... I don't know, looking at all that white, that would be neat. You've got this green grass. I mean, all these. I don't know. Sergeant could make a composition out of anything, huh? Her too. Just they just. I mean, did you see that little composition of the little girl sitting with the blue chairs? I guess that was her first intro to impressionism. Anyway, that was. <laughs> that's a magnificent piece. Yeah. What a what a beginning. I wonder where all that upholstered furniture was. It was all the same pattern. Yeah. So an interior designer got into that room. That's right. Anyway. Um, I'm back in and knock some of these back a little bit. See, you can. Bring them up and then knock them down. Bring them up and knock them down. As far as value goes, as far as saturation goes. That's why you see all the little sort of patches in there. Because she's probably brought this thing up and knocked it back down four times. Not that it, and not that, that her first try wasn't awesome. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I mean, do we know the title of this? It's just self portrait. Oh. in there.
I'm thinking that's going to dry dark enough. We'll see. Now we weaving it in there. She gets some of these milky, translucent qualities in there. See now, I always thought this was watercolor. I mean, even though you're looking through white, you're still seeing what's underneath it. I just thought that that was another quality of watercolor. So then when I, I was a little heartbroken when I found out that um, some of these, some of these uh, clubs didn't like that kind of thing. But I felt like saying, you know, this is Mary Cassatt you're looking at right here, right? So you're basically saying that Mary Cassatt couldn't be in your little club? That's kind of crazy. <laughs> what a great artist. And she's a great watercolorist. There's no question about this. She's, she's really on very, very, very high level here. And I don't know who's on a higher level. Um, Anyway, you know what I mean? These, these, these. She would probably take their challenge, though, and do an excellent job oh. without. Oh, them. oh, I'm sure. Absolutely, there's no question. Absolutely. But how do you think that ever got started? Well, it, it begins with these clubs. Okay, they, and then I, I see her thinking. Huh? What is their thinking? Why it's a no-no? Well, you know, they, they need rules. Okay, they really need their rules. I mean, they, you, yeah, you got to be in. I've been in a few of them, and I listen to them. And I'm like, wow. So, so it's like, like a, really nuts about your rules. You really. <laughs> it's such an maybe it's an American thing. I don't know, but or an English thing or both. I don't know, but or a control thing. Whatever. It is. You almost want to shake your head and go, you, you, let me point some artists out to you. <laughs> like every great watercolorist, every one of them. I'm talking about the ones that really, you know, moved. The ones we should all be looking up to. And um, she's definitely one to look up to. I like the look of a transparent watercolor, but I don't, I don't, I don't look at it as being like a, a category. I just feel like it's a quality of watercolor. You got transparent, you got opaque, you got. I mean, I think some people would, wouldn't even like you putting the lines in here like this, because they're like tonalists. I'm a tonalist. You can only use tones. You know. I mean, I'm serious. I think I'm joking. This is a, this is what they all should do too. They should all take my class. <laughs> no, they should all uh, study the masters. Bob, I once had a writing instructor, <clears throat> Jimmy Williams, and one of his sayings, it's what you learn after you think you know it all that counts. Mm. What you learn after you think you know it all. Th that's a great saying. I like that. After you think you know it all. What if you don't think you know it all? <laughs> What if my whole life I've always been thinking, I need to learn more. I want to learn more. I want to learn more. <laughs> and that's a definite positive. Because you'll keep growing. Yeah, I I, I, I really. Um, what else? 
Oh. I think there's a quote attributed to Michelangelo where he says something like, I'm still learning. Yeah. So, <laughs> I am still learning. Yeah, you never stop. What I love is to talk to either you know, people who've really never painted very much and hear what they have to say, or, or kids. Kids have a lot of great things to say. And you know, you look at them and they're just saying the first thing that comes to their mind. And they're without any inhibitions, you know, and you just kind of oh, that was an honest, honest assessment there. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, um, just when you thought you knew all the answers, they changed all the questions. <laughs> I love that one. You know who has a lot of quotes? I mean, besides Ben Franklin, and, but Leonardo da Vinci has a lot of quotes. I mean, there's a ton of them. And they're all, I sat around reading them, and I, I couldn't believe how many good ones there are. They're really good. They're not just about art. They're about life, they're about science, they're about all kinds of things. They're just amazing. I gotta come up with a good one. Don't. Oh, don't be afraid of the dark. I still can't get all the weaving in the end of this nose, my gosh. She's got greens and yellows and blue in there. Man. Crazy. Do you think she she originated that technique or no. used that for a long while? Oh no, our art's been doing that for a long, long time. Yeah. I'd have Maybe to not the same way she does it though. Yeah. I'd have to say I hadn't heard of it with paint, more with pen and ink. Oh, no, yeah, you, you can look at, um, um, like, you know, this Hans Holbein that she liked? Did you hear? Did you hear? Um, yes. Uh, he, all those Dutch painters did this, which is one of the reasons their paintings don't crack. Probably. I mean, 600-year-old paintings with no cracks in them. They painted on top of uh, gouache too, by the way, or, or uh, maybe very much like what we're doing here. <clears throat> and 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 a lot of the recipes they just they just they took them with them when they died. But the way they would prepare their surface, first of all, they worked on tin and copper and things like that, and um, and they put very thin coats of of gesso down. Very thin. And um, many coats. And then you sand each one of them. Very fine. Uh, what else? Then And then you, you, you do your first painting part like this in gouache. Just think about it. You've got the gesso, which has chalk in it, and then you have the gouache that has chalk in it. Now, I don't mean it's, it's necessarily gouache because they didn't have something called gouache probably back then. It was a form of tempera paint, but they, anyway, they put calcium carbonate, which is, that's the chalk, into their pigment which made it super, super duper absorbent. So when they, when they then very thinly glaze their oil on top, it just, just drank it up. So they got great adoration. And then, um, it has their, their method, uh, so for instance, the, how they built up their layers, had everything to do with the cracking or the lack of cracking. So 
if you're going to glaze a layer over another layer, you make sure it's dry. I mean, it's totally dry. And think about it, up, up, up where they were painting, it's kind of hard to dry things. The more north you are, the longer and harder it is to get things to dry. And they're all working in oils. You must have done many oil paintings at the same time. You had to. We're down here in Southern California. Plus, we have air conditioners and things. But they're up there. It's just a fireplace. Well, yeah, that was fun. Oh, we got a few minutes. Here we are. It's a little grayer. A little bit grayer in the shadows. I'm thinking that's going to go darker. She gets, you know, it gets quite dark in here in this plane because. And the light hits down below and then it goes into shadow because of your cheekbones and then it goes out and it goes back up. She's extremely aware of the planes of probably everything, but definitely of the face. I'll let that dry up and see how it could have got darker with all this. You know, if you look at uh, Delacroix, would weave a lot of his strokes in there too. So he's a good one to look at for um, this, this whole look. But even you can go back to Baroque times too. They're they're doing it. Even on these huge murals, they had the whole studios doing it. It's just a really great way to scatter strokes.
speak to the face a little bit. Come back from his ear a little bit. Sure, it's MC on it. I like that. I didn't even know. <laughs> I think it's done in pencil, isn't it? Huh. All right. Uh, I'll write my name in lowercase. Cassatt have two S's or two T's? I'll have to look back. Somebody knows. I think she has it's both. <laughs> oh. Well, what a fun study. My gosh. This was fun. I, I think I want to blow up the face and do just that. I know. Because it's so hard working, <laughs> doing all that stuff on a tiny little face. Well, at least I know. It's yeah. Like... <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't actually look to see how big this is. It would help if it was a lot bigger. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'll have to. You know, they have revisit a, that. On um. On Google, you can just go into Google Images and and then oh yeah, hit images. Yeah, and there's a little camera in there, and you can just drag and drop your picture in there, and then it'll show you. Right, there it is. Wow, some some versions of this are very gray. That's interesting. Okay, so then So it's just so oh twenty twenty no that can't be right. Twenty by twenty four. Nineteen by twenty four, is that right? Is it that big? That's huge. Well, a, a sketch pad's 18 by 24, a lot of them, you know, mm -hmm. that you hook onto a, a board. Yeah. So that's basically that size. That, yeah. She liked herself. <laughs> she liked herself. <laughs> I think she was a cheap model. <laughs> a cheap model. Okay. Um. Mary Stevenson Cassatt. You're right, two S's, two. There it is. Of course, they give it in centimeters. Oh, here it is. 12 and 7 eighths by 9 and 11 sixteenths. So 13 by 10, basically. Or 9 by 12. So 9 and 11 sixteenths is almost 10. Um, so that's not huge. I mean, that's not uh, as big as I thought it was. We're almost the right size. I'm a little smaller than hers, but. OK. Shall we start mailing them in? I know you can work on these all day.
How about uh, in five minutes? So 11.34, how about 11.40, okay? Okay. Yeah.
All right, Claire. Nice color. Ah, uh, thank you. Very sketchy. That's it. That's that's the land approach right there. <clears throat> All right. I mean, your whole approach to the, her technique is great. Um, when we get into the um, weaving of the, the kind of the thicker paint, where she gets more opaque with it. Yeah. Looks like you haven't got there yet, Claire. No. No, I want to take a break. Mm. The, face. the face, it is small. I agree with what Diane was saying. It's just, it's pretty small. And it's it's very hard to work small when the rest of it is so sketchy and large. Yeah. And it's sort of washing all over the place. And then you come to this little teeny face. <laughs> yeah. It's like you have to switch into a completely other gear. Yeah, she, she can get pretty tight. I would um, um, <clears throat> probably make everything over here, all this, darker. darker, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what you have, there's a great land. Okay. So just, just value-wise, a little, you know, she gets kind of um, pinks and blue-grays in there and things, but you want a lot of contrast between these two values. I see. Yeah, no, I see that. And then what you could do is keep keep it pretty bright down here. Uh-huh. And if you'll notice, she gets a little darker up here and then up here because of the reflected light down below. Yeah. Okay. It's not extreme or anything weird. Uh-uh. Right? Yeah. No. Oh. Thank you. Very nicely done. Thank you. Yeah. That was fun. That's the approach. I love her stuff. And it's nice that she found a watercolor, yeah. too. So I find the oils, you know, imitating oil with watercolor is diff difficult. I not, know it is, yeah. Not impossible, but it, and it's, it's a good exercise, but I, you know, it's also nice to see how she handles watercolor. Right, yeah. Thank you. Sure. The, I mean, you know she has a lot of experience with it because um, I'm sure she does it under her pastels, and her pastels are incredible. So. All right, Lily. Hi. Hi. What you think? <laughs> it was the face was hard, yeah. Well, it looks pretty good. Your proportions look good. Um, now, one of the reasons you had to get so bright with the reflected light is because your shadow is a little on the light side. So what I would do is maybe glaze that down a little bit. But your, your handling and everything is very nice. I mean, the way your, your approach is very good. It's just, I would go darker with the shadows. Oh, okay. What color should I use? I struggle with that to make it darker. Um, I would use, and I don't have the right color, something kind of pinkish. Okay. More in there. And then I might add a little bit of um, violet to it in places too. Okay. So you're not wrong with these colors. They're, if anything, they're a little bit on the cool side, so I might warm it up. But th these colors are definitely in there. Okay. Yeah. So if you came over with something warmer, like this is obviously too warm. But see, they'll blend in with your cools and it'll balance out very nicely. So, yeah. So, I'd probably stick with kind of in the pink area because you already got enough cool in there. Okay. Yeah. 
At first I used the Chinese white for the white area wasn't enough, so I have to use the gouache, yeah. Yeah, Chinese white is very, um, <clears throat> it's not as opaque as the white gouache is. So when I need to go opaque, I just, I, I don't really use the uh, Chinese white too much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Gail? There you go. Can I get up in here any closer? There we go. Now, are you using, what are you using in the face? That's colored pencils. It's not uh, pastel mm. I thought it was that, um, what do you call it, that, that uh, watercolor pastels. Uh, no, they're just colored pencils. Okay. Yeah. So then, I like your colors, but I would like to see a lot, a little more differentiation between the, the shadows and the light. Right now, the shadows and the light are almost. We've got you know lights over here, so even though this reflected light is brighter than the rest of the shadow, it's probably not as bright as the regular lights are. So that that can really throw everyone. In. I, I might go in there with watercolor. Darken it up. It was too hard to do it with a pencil. Yeah. So I would just put a value right over all the shadow, like just group the whole thing. So it just reads as light and shadow. So if you squint your eyes and look at it, it kind of holds together. See, you can still see reflected light in here. Yeah. It's brighter than the rest of the shadow, but it's not as bright as the light. That's that's a toughie. Okay. I mean that that's everybody everybody does that. So in there too. Otherwise, your your you know your colors are great. Handling is great. You even got some uh, some of that green in here, huh? Yeah, like everyone says, it, the the face is pretty small. It's hard to get. Uh, yeah, it is. You know, it's going to make the whole thing bigger. Maybe we should just do a face study, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad idea. Okay. Nicely done. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Ron. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh. There's, do you have any others? No? Just one. <laughs> there it is. So you really got her broken sort of impressionist technique down. See, see how she leaves the uh, white of the paper, everybody, and um, <clears throat> and the lost quality of her. You can really experience the broken strokes. So nice techniques. Thank you. Yeah. And then, right, so, um, I know she does have, I mean, she, your, your, your lights over here are nice and bright. I might carry some of those lights, you know, over up onto the nose and up onto here, a little bit brighter. Just, I only have Chinese white and it just disappears. Oh, that's it. That, yeah, that, that's tough. It, it, everything turns kind of gray. So she's mostly sort of. Blotchy. <laughs> not bad though, not bad at all. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes with the Chinese white, you just have to get very thick with it and without very much water in there at all to get it really white. So, um, that, that's my only, I mean, I've struggled with Chinese white. I just, I just switched to gouache because it was just too transparent for me. Um, everything else is wonderful, though. I mean, you know, you have the technique down. It's Thank only you. a value. It's only a value thing, really. Yeah. How'd you like it? Oh, she's fun. Yeah, yeah. The costume was was really fun. The face. Yeah. I should have stopped a long time before I did. I just kept playing with it. I think it had better stages. Uh, yeah. 
All right, then. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy, and we're off to Henry. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> Should I take it again? Uh, yeah, why don't you send it again? I'll, I'll just move on and come back to you. Okay, right. thank you. And Suzanne. Oh, very nice, Suzanne. Got all the warms and cools. I like these cools you have in the pages. Very nice. Um, great colors, great handling. I, I love the all the mark making, the wet and the wet line. Um, you know, even though I think your shadows are a little on the bright side, you've got such bright lights here, it works. If they are off, which I, I doubt they are that much, but you know, it's a really good pattern of light. The way it comes up over the nose, down over the chin. Now, if you'll notice, you did catch the reflected light here. Um, if you were to get a little bit of, I wouldn't call it shadow here, but maybe like some of this tone right here, a little bit cooler, a little bit darker. Okay. Um, because, because what happens is that this plane is catching light, and this plane goes into shadow in here. So oftentimes, when you see somebody lift, lit from the bottom, you'll mm -hmm. see all this area go into shadow. Of course, not nearly as dark as I'm doing it. Maybe something like this. Value right in there. Uh -huh. I don't have that value. But um, a little of that there, a little of that here, possibly. I'd look for those. But okay. And I think they're in the cool category, so some of these cooler, like a almost lavender color. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So, I mean, yeah. That's, that's working. Okay. Thank you. It was very fun. Good. Nice to look at this. It's beautiful work. All right. Thank you. Uh, oops. Oh, my computer is acting up. My mouse wasn't working there for a second. All right. Maria. All right. All right, so you got the basic colors laid in very nicely. Hello. Yes, hi. <laughs> and is that a real phone or is that just your phone on your room? No, that's not me. Oh, uh, that was someone else. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I was just going to say, well, somebody has a real phone. Can you come over and look at it? <laughs> I thought it was coming from your home. Mm. Okay. All right, so... So if we, if we divide the head up into light and shadow, your lights are fine. The shadows have a lot of um, variation to them. Like, for instance, you did hit this nice and dark. Um, so that does make this feel like it's reflected light. Around here is a little light. What I would do is take a glaze. Uh, you have a lot of warm in there, so I would take a glaze with something probably in the lavender family. That bluish blue. I don't have the right color, but blue, okay. blue violet anyway. And and glaze it over a lot of this stuff. Kind of a grayish blue violet, I think, would look good. And then so make sure you get something on, on the bottom of the nose and then around all of this. I'll just group all that. What I'm looking for is a, the, a pattern of you know, oh, like yeah, that's nice. light over here and shadow over here. Yeah. I'm going to take a photo. Yeah, yeah. And you have it on the recording too. Okay. Plus, 
Let's see. No, I don't. I don't know. Maybe this would be just a little bit darker. I don't. I don't want, wouldn't want it to be lighter than the bay, but I know she's got a white collar on that. Just a little bit, maybe a little bit darker. It could very well be that you could just take this glaze right, right over all that. And then after that, see what you need. I mean, how far do you want to take it? So. I would start all over again. <laughs> well, do you know you could still take this quite a bit further? I mean, we can all start over, but I mean, it it was really hard. I had no idea what I was doing. I I had a hard time just trying to get the face look like a face and not like a monster. Well, <laughs> if you don't have a lot of background doing faces, and that's yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. All we're studying here is this her, just her technique. And then we can move on to other things, but um, <clears throat> I love Suzanne's that I could see because in my imagination, I didn't even know what I was painting, but I could yeah. see what she painted the dress and I could see all the details where she saw things that I really didn't see. Yeah. You know, actually though, I would say you know, if you don't have a lot of experience doing faces, you know, your proportions are pretty darn good. Look at that. The shape is totally off. The hair keep on growing. <laughs> and wow. I, I don't think the proportions are really good. It's a little wide. She, she's, but then I made her face too long, so whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, that's more yeah. like that. You, you wouldn't believe it. Your proportions are actually pretty square. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very Pardon? much. It was, yeah, it was a good experience. Good, good. All right. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Maria. And where are we? There's Henry. All okay. right, Henry. Good. <laughs> there we go. Now, you're working on a hot press paper, huh? Yeah, that's the same uh, the the from the notebook, uh, the mixed media paper from the mm. the one you use with the uh, Chrome Batcher. Oh, the, yeah, Chromebacker. Yeah. Chromebacker. Uh -huh. All right, nice colors, nice looking technique. I mean, technically, maybe the shadows could be a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. The color is great. Like, I might glaze those down a little bit. I don't know. Um, nice, beautiful sketchiness at the bottom. Look at all that. Fantastic. Thank you. Great watermarks, strokes, puddles. How'd you like it? How'd you like Larry Cassatt? Oh, I was in San Diego in the um, Impressionism from uh, Monet to Matisse show. That link you you sent us, the information oh, you, yeah, yeah. you shared. Yeah, that was a great show. And I did see one of her portrait, I believe. There are plenty of good ones there. Uh, it's a very good warm up last uh, weekend we did. Yeah. Thanks for the information, and I really like the the uh, uh, in, intimate uh, family kind of portraits are, are uh, yeah yeah that's yeah. really nice yeah they're pretty optimistic yeah okay thank okay. you Henry thank you you are nice work and right to Anne. <clears throat> what did you think, Diane? Great colors. Oh. See, you have a really good division between light and shadow. There we go. Light oh. and shadow. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think my gouache got kind of, um, I think it's warmer on the, you know, the lit side. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the side. So I should have added more pink, but it kept just getting more gray on me. So I, I need to... Yeah, you know, um, there's something about, are you using, what what brand name of gouache are you using? Okay, so I'm trying a new oh. titanium white, and it's that, it's the uh, Schmincke. 
Oh, so okay. I, I'm not, not familiar I don't know. with that. So it's it's titanium or pink white, and it's made by that company, Schminka. Schminka. So it's the first I, time that I'm trying Schminka. So I don't know. You're, if that you're saying it came out a little cool on you, right? Yeah, it came out cool on me. Okay, so, so uh, even, titanium is a blue or white, just so you know. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, titanium. No, I I use it, and mine's definitely bluer too. I'm kind of used okay. to it, but. Uh, okay. That, that is something to know about uh, just titanium in general, in, in okay. oil paints or whatever. It's a blue or white. Okay. Some whites are warmer. Um, okay, so maybe knowing that I should add a little bit of like yellow to it or something? Yeah, add a little or, bit of okay. something warm to it. Okay. Just a little kiss of like yellow or orange. Okay. Yeah, just a touch. Okay. Um, <laughs> and like maybe... <laughs> Maybe something like this in the background, or I mean, I I, I don't oh, add very much to it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything else, this is fantastic. Nice and sketchy. Great shapes. Well, it was fun um, doing this without drawing first. You know, you were right that it yeah. kind of made it a lot looser and less color within the lines and. Right. <laughs> Right, maybe maybe we could have got it more accurate if we would have. Yeah. But at the same time, this this technique of uh, um, drawing with the brush is, is quite nice. Yeah, that was fun. So, and I do want to try to try her face over, but larger, just to practice that hatching mm. that she does. Yeah. So, yeah, I so. I'd like to at least. So. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That's great. Okay, thanks. Okay, nice colors, Gabe. Oops, what happened? Let me try it again. <laughs>